total invites you to sit back and enjoy the action and the excitement from the Wreckers to Bunchu Sun 500, the final round of the Total GTE Off-Road Championship. For the best in motorsport action, turn to Total. To Bunchu, big sky country and a magnificent backdrop for this last event of the season. As usual, pre-race paddock activity was high with competitors attending to those last-minute details which could make or break their race for them. With championship points in some categories depending on this last event, nothing could be left to chance. Machines were checked and rechecked a dozen times. As usual, with off-road racing, everyone pitched in to help and assist drivers and riders before the race. Among the 200s, Richard Manning has dominated this season, with his fine overall win in the Toyota 1000 Desert Race contributing to his healthy position. However, Chris Dodd wasn't that far behind him and still stood a chance of beating Manning. I'm only really worry that Richard does have because um, he dropped one race over the whole year so with the po dropping some points if, if he finishes in, in with the points then he'll take the championship if he doesn't finish I've got to actually win so there's a chance but Winston Yamaha rider Manning didn't intend throwing this race away and was in fine form during Friday's speed trial Chasing Manny was Alex Valls Jr. on the Antelex Dairy Kawasaki. I've just won the Enduro Championship last weekend in Elands Valley. And I think my chances are pretty good of doing well here. Yeah, so hopefully I can make it a double. Steve Parker and VZ Fonzale led their class throughout the year. And with the championship in the bag, the pair didn't need to pitch for this event. Derek Pinoy and Antoine Mehring did well at the Roof of Africa in their Class 2 Beetle and sharing the driving now expected another good result. We got a very good chance of winning Class 2 uh, and even category if we don't have any problems with the car. We, uh, we're as competitive as anything in our category. Uh, the American cars are a little bit quicker in the rough but uh, we're not too worried about this. Wilfried Verslau and Dagmar Blankner haven't done as well as expected this year but nevertheless they gave it all they had for this final race. Jeremy Davies had a bad start to the season when he injured his knee, but a good finish at the roof and a win at the Mabatu Sun 500 boosted his points, and the championship was his if he finished this event. Anthony Taylor on the Vibro Bricks Suzuki had a bad fall during the speed trial, but kept on going. Yeah, I hit a, hit a sheep by about 15 k's, 20 k's into the second section. Um, I went down quite hard, and you know, I've tweaked my wrist, I think, so I don't know what's this. I hope it's right for tomorrow. It's a bit sore at the moment. Team Green Kawasaki rider Yanni Debrain led the class all year before the return of Davies and now in third place was taking it easy. The hoofdoel is to make it easy. It good to make it easy to get the hoofdoel. We try to make it easy to make it easy, but we'll go full out. On his Truck Africa KTM, Davies, South Africa's only total Perry Le Cup rally entrant, displays his superb riding style, despite a slight miscalculation. I must finish today, but it's also a problem to finish sometimes. When you go there to finish, it's more difficult than winning, but uh, I'm here to do well, and I'll do my best. In the commercial vehicle category, Alfred van Furen and Piet Pelzer have had no opposition this year, with Toyota Hilux featuring well at every event. Among the Class 6 buckies, Philip Malone and Richard Leake in their Toyota Hilux were out to beat the competitors Rainer Mankies and Rainier Eusta, the latter driving a Nissan Safari. Soos dat het die einde van die jaar is, voel ek, moet ons net klaarmaak en ons gaan so dit aanpak en uh, ek is so tyg, hierdie wedren gaan ons goed doen, want ons is rechtig baie rustig. Despite their fast pace, the Nissan team was worried about the muddy conditions. Nee, ons het gehoor maar vir die ouwens en ons sien dit baie nat, so uh, ons het maar bang vir die water, maar ons gaan maar kyk wat gebeur voor ons. Mud held no terrors for the Free State team of Van Feren and Pelzer in their Sassel Toyota Hilux, who were on home turf in this spectacular part of the world. We're going to make a calm ride. 
Dus ik wil ik net klaarmaken, dus ik zie, ik, ik, ik was al wat ik nodig heb, ik moet klaarmaken om mijn om, om punten te hebben, om uh, dat, 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 alle titels te vatten en niemand mij kan vangen. Dus ik ga op mijn, op mijn tijd rijden en mooi rijden, dat ik net probeer dat ik zeker is, ik maak klaar. Back among the 500cc motorcycles, the championship hadn't yet been won, and despite Kevin Tebbett's lead, a non-finish could have dashed his hopes. For Castrol Barber Spun 500 winner, Cocky Bainham, it was to be his last ride under the Pro Honda banner. Kevin is two points before me, so the 500 class is helemaal up. Kevin Tebbett trains six points, want he must have one race drop, so he has six points before me, so anything can happen. Uh, it's going to be a hard race, I think. I mean, anything one of us three can win. So we're going to all give up, I think. Bad luck befell Kevin Fisher, who, although second in the championships, retired on Friday's stretch, blowing his chances completely. I had to catch Tibbet and uh, beat him this race to win the championship. Unfortunately, my big end on my bike uh, uh, put a hole in my case, and it put me out of the race. That's it, my whole year championship going. Showing his speedway experience here was the ever-popular Kevin Tibbet, making this off-road business look so easy. I will try and go win it, win the championship, do well. But I'm looking forward to it. I like this kind of country. I believe uh, we're going on the mountains. I like it. I'm sure I'll do well. Bugs Carolyn and Kenny Skolthammer had their special vehicles championship sewn up neatly, and their horsepowered Castrol race car was ready to make mincemeat of the other competitors. Greg Weevil and Warren Clarson have shown incredible form in their debut season with a second overall at the roof, proving they've got what it takes. Raising some dust in their wake were Richard Schilling and Robbie Walk in the Mototech Raceco, who in turn were being chased by Klaus Degener and Robin Yates in the very muddy Duckham's Chenoweth. I'm just going to go and do what I did in the roof. I'm gonna, you're going to drive hard. I think Warren's going to navigate it as well as he did in the roof and I think that gave us a, a big opportunity in the roof because we never really wrong slotted and that's how we're going to do it today. We're going to stick with the front runners and see what we can do on tomorrow. Tomorrow we race. Some raced and some had bad luck. Class 9 driver Fast Fred Levesque had problems when his Mototech Chenoweth hit a hole and he lost a wheel. Although off-road drivers can normally make a plan, Levesque was eventually forced to concede defeat for the day and limp home on three wheels. Despite all this, he was back on the start line on Saturday morning on four wheels. Back among the Class 8 space frames and Carolyn and Skulltummer were purring along nicely in their race coat, despite earlier problems with ignition boxes. Basically, I just have to finish to win the championship. It will be my third championship in a row, and that equals Des Tarbiton's record. And uh, Des was always a man that I admired, and it's good enough for me. Saturday morning's start was a 7 o'clock one, with Richard Schilling and Rob Walk leading the pack. Uh, I believe that the second loop is really where it's quite tough. So I, I believe uh, that's where the race will be sorted out. Uh, the last portion is very fast, and there's not too much skill in that area. So second loop is where the race will happen. This is all part of the new image I'm going to portray from it now on. I've been responsible for a lot of the degradation of this sport and I feel myself now responsible to provide a little bit of upliftment. It's time we had a better class of character in this off-road racing. This muddy mechanic image has to disappear in future. And away they go with the first six cars being space frames. Highest placed single seater among the top eight was Natal's Roger Westermeyer in the Eskimo Refrigeration Orco in fourth position. Leading the class twos in their VW Beetle were Derek Pinoy and Antoine Merry with a Bucky Brigade and the badly smoking Toyota Hilux of Cassie Kutzer and Wiley Harrington behind them. Tenth off the start line and a couple of seconds behind Kutzer and Harrington were husband and wife team Arnold and Estelle Mathieu in the Mayerton Toyota race car. No, we just start and as we go to second gear there was a hell of a noise in the engine and we couldn't find what is the problem and I smell smoke and then next thing we it's electrical fault, a hole in the block. Despite Schilling and Walk having led at the start, a puncture and then a broken side shaft retired their Mototech race co from the race and saw Springboks, Books Carolyn and Kenny Skolthammer soon pulling into the lead. The Castrol race co powering effortlessly through the dust. Klaus Degener and Robin Yates had started second, but a wrong slot here lost their Duckham's Chenoweth a few precious seconds. 
Degener has a reputation for foot-flat driving, and there was no doubt he'd make up the time easily. Besides, there's nothing he enjoys more than a top-speed dice with rival Carolyn. Leading Class 9 and third overall was Roger Westermeyer in the Eskimo Refrigeration Orco. Older vehicles like his suffer more punishment at these speeds than do the imported cars. Drivers always hope and pray their cars will last the race distance. For a change, the off-road gods were smiling on Philip Lund and Richard Leak, whose powerful but not always reliable turbocharged Toyota Hilux had moved up to fourth overall and first in Class 6. Making a welcome return to racing were Jack Spencer and Vic Camper in the powerful Rover V8-powered Sandmaster, leading the newly introduced Class 8A. This class differs from the other Class 8s in that it incorporates only the older space frames as opposed to the newer high-tech American imports. The idea is to even out the chances among the Class 8 entries, usually the most competitive class in off-road racing. And doing his bit to prove that old needn't necessarily mean slow was Derek Pinoy along with Antoine Mehring in the Class 2 Beetle. The two were way ahead of their rivals and lying in a very healthy sixth place overall. Class 5 leaders were Alfred van Feeren and Piet Pelzer, who've reigned supreme in this class throughout the season. Their Toyota Hilux was lying ninth overall, and with the commercial vehicle category already theirs, finishing this event was merely a formality for them. Also class leaders, but this time of class three, were Theo Kutsier and Ian Wedderburn in their Chevy 510, who are lying 15th overall. Right behind them, Stratford Furcht and Guido de Grief led the charge in the class four. Their powerful American Toyota Hilux sounding very strong as they blasted their way through the dusty field. The Gilo Engineering Bucky was making steady progress along the route, having moved from 23rd to 16th position. More class leaders, this time in the form of the PC Warehouse Class 10 Orco, driven by Ferdy Peterson and navigated by Martin van Eerden, who was successfully keeping the opposition at bay. Meanwhile, at the motorcycle stop, Alfie Cox was ready to race in his third national event since his recent return from the USA.